how to make copies of your arcade hard drive, and how to convert MAME CHD files into playable arcade hard drives. This video is a two-parter related to copying your old-style mechanical hard drive into a solid-state format. Original hard drives are sensitive to shock and wear out. A solid-state drive loads faster and is more reliable. It is also good to have a copy of your arcade hard drive in case it goes bad. I'll talk about what kind of equipment is required, show you how to copy an existing hard drive using a program called Macrium Reflect, and also show you how to create a copy of an arcade hard drive from a MAME CHD file. I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead. I'm making this video because I struggled with copying a hard drive of my own. I had a Silver Strike bowling game with a hard drive that was on its last leg, and I couldn't find it on the internet. My machine would stop working sometimes, and it would stop working most of the times my drunk friends showed up and were beating on it. Before I proceed, I need to let you know copying hard drives is a lot like Fight Club. There are rules. Am I the only one around here who gives a <laughs> about the rules? The first rule is, don't be an <laughs> If you don't pay attention, you may copy the wrong hard drive and <laughs> your computer. The second rule is, if you do <laughs> your computer, don't come crying to me. Now let's make it four rules. Don't be afraid. This isn't a difficult task. You can take the proper precautions by paying attention, using a computer that doesn't have irreplaceable files, or setting up a virtual desktop to make the copies. You can do it. You can do it! Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about some of the hardware involved. Hardware options for replacing your arcade hard drive. There are two types of hard drive connections for what we are doing here. IDE and SATA. The hard drive on the left is IDE, and this is more common for arcade machines from the 90s. The one on the right is SATA and is more modern. The first thing you'll need to do is hook up your old hard drive to your computer. You can do this if your computer has an open hard drive connector, however I like this other option better. It is an IDE SATA to USB adapter. You can find these on the internets. On the uh, internets. You won't get there by searching who would win in a fight, Chuck Norris, Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, Rambo, or Superman. But it is easy enough to find if you search hard drive to USB adapter or IDE SATA to USB adapter. Here's the one I bought. It can accept IDE connectors. This one is for SATA. And it has a separate power supply to power your hard drive. These things are pretty cheap and mine works well, but I don't endorse it because I haven't compared it to any of the other ones. There are two types of connections we will discuss, IDE and SATA. This is what an IDE connector looks like, and this is what a SATA connector looks like. There are a few options when copying your hard drive to a solid state format. You could either copy an old mechanical hard drive and install it, but that won't increase the reliability of the system, and the new drives will also boot faster. The first and original format used is an IDE to compact flash. These were used in cameras back in the 90s and were better than the mechanical hard drive because they could take a shock. A more modern adapter will use a micro SD card. This one on the left has an IDE connection. The one on the right has a SATA. The SD cards are easy to swap in and out. This particular card is one gigabyte in size, which is becoming less common because data storage costs are going down and people don't need such a small size. It costs about $2 for a one gigabyte card at the time of this video. This is an IDE to SATA adapter. I didn't end up using it, but thought it would be nice to have around just in case. The last option is to use a regular solid state hard drive. My Silver Strike Bowling needed about 80 gigabytes, but you'll find a lot of old arcade machines don't use this kind of memory. Oh yeah, without knowing it, I had a SATA to USB adapter in the form of this backup hard drive. This can go directly into a SATA hard drive. So all of these parts are cheap, 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 and should be easy to find with any internet search. On the uh, 
internets. Okay, no more fooling around. Let's go over to the computer now. How to copy your existing arcade hard drive using a program called Macrium Reflect. For demonstration purposes, I will make a copy of my Silver Strike Bowling hard drive using a program called Macrium Reflect. I'll reiterate, it's best to use a computer that you wouldn't mind if all the files were accidentally deleted. Not a good idea to gamble with a computer that has the only copy of your family photos or important documents. I tried out a few programs unlike Macrium Reflect. It is free, easy to use, and does what I need it to, to do. I already have this installed, but we'll go through the steps so you can see how installation looks. First, I open a browser window, search for Macrium Reflect, select the version that says Free Home Edition, enter my address, hit OK. Then I went to my email and received a message with a link to download the software. The first step took about 8 minutes. I'll speed the video up so you don't have to watch download bars. After you download, they'll send you another email with your license key. You type that in. A couple of more load screens. These ones are showing at regular speed. Now the program is started and you can see I have my hard drive showing. This computer has two hard drives installed and I have yet to connect my Silver Strike Bowling hard drive. I exit out of the program and hook up an OG OE Silver Strike Bowling hard drive to my USB adapter. Start Macrium Reflect. You see I have MBR Disk 3 which is my Silver Strike Bowling. Copying the disk is easy. Select the check mark next to the disk and choose image this disk. Choose your folder. I like to let the software choose the name. Later on you can go back and rename the folder or the file. You can go to finish but I'll select next to see the other options. The software is set up to make periodic copies of your hard drive. I don't want to do that so I'll make sure none is selected and unselect the retention rules. Hitting next lets you preview what is being copied. Copying the hard drive to an image won't destroy your computer, but it's nice to double check the correct hard drive number, 3 in my case, is being imaged. Now I hit finish. I don't want to save an XML file, but it doesn't matter if you check this or not. It creates some kind of file that keeps track of your updates. In my case, I'm only going to be doing one update to this drive. Hitting OK starts the process. This took about 5 minutes. You can watch funny internet videos while this is processing. Now that the hard drive is imaged, it's time to copy it to a new blank solid state hard drive. Here's what it looks like hooked up. Either hit refresh or close and open Macrium Refresh to see the new blank hard drive. I think the file I was copying was about 80 gigabytes and I'm using a 120 gigabyte hard drive. Disk 3 shows up. I can see it's the correct size for the one I hooked up and it doesn't show any partition space. To copy a hard drive, select Restore from the menu above and then browse for an image or backup file to restore. I select the image from the Macrium backup file I made earlier. With my hard drive image loaded, I hit the Restore Image button. Select a disk to restore. Select the correct disk to write over. Verify the size matches. The partitions for Silver Strike look correct. Double check everything and pray to the Jesus you don't overwrite your C drive. 
Writing to the new hard drive took about 10 minutes. I leave my computer alone this time and don't go looking for entertaining videos on the internet, or at least not with this computer. That's really all there is to copying your hard drive if you have a good file. Here I went to the Windows Disk Partition tool to see what it looks like. It's all there. I was trying to help somebody restore their Silver Strike when their hard drive already went bad. Both machines were Silver Strike 2005, but my hardware version was different, so unfortunately it didn't work out for him. Since I like using Internet Archive so much, I'm going to upload my copy of Silver Strike Bowling there. See the link in the description or bossrobotgames.com. How to copy a hard drive using the MAME CHD man tool. Okay, we went through the hardware options, how to image and copy a hard drive, and now it's time to talk about making an image from MAME CHD copy of our game. MAME, of course, is the multiple arcade machine emulator and is used to copy how the arcade runs or run as close as possible to the real arcade board. CHD is MAME's file format for arcade games that require hard drives. It stands for Compressed Hunks of Data. Silver Strike Bowling is not available in MAME, so I'll use Rush the Rock as an example. There are hundreds of games available on MAME, and I can think of a few that are not. Big Buck Hunter is another one. To start off with, I'll do a search to find the file name for San Francisco Rush the Rock Alcatraz Edition. There are many ways to do this, and I talked about this in my other videos. This is a good example because there are a couple of versions of this game, and I need the Alcatraz Edition. You'll want the right file or your arcade machine may not work. Here I went to MU Paradise and found the file name is SFRUSHRK. I'm not going to download it from here because I want to make sure it's the correct version. I'll go over to Internet Archive and search for MAME CHDs. It's important to get a later version as this game wasn't available on the earlier releases of MAME. Also, I'm looking for an archive where I can view the contents and download the files one at a time rather than the whole torrent file. This one, for instance, doesn't allow that. MAME version 161 archive allows me to view the contents and download the files one at a time. You'll need the CHD file and the regular ROM file to test this in MAME. The next step is to go to mamedev.org and download the version 161 to match the files and test them out. I had a copy on my computer and it happened to be MAME version 193. To run this game, you need to make sure the ROM file is in the ROMs folder and there's also a folder with the ROM name where I put my CHD file in. If I click into MAME, this file should run. My computer is a little slow, but I'm using this one because it isn't a big deal if I accidentally overwrite the hard drive. You can tell by the sexy lady and the sweet music that everything checks out. I will use a program bundle with a MAME called CHD MAN to make a copy of this. I need to make sure my CHD file is in the same directory as my CHD MAN utility. In this case mine is because I copied this before. Now I hook up a fresh hard drive to the adapter. The first time I tried it was with the one gigabyte card but found out the file was 14 gigabytes. I'll show you how to find out how large of a hard drive you will need depending on what game you're copying. 
I open up the disk management tool to see my hard drive is installed on disk 2. To do this, you hit the Windows button and type in disk man. This is very important to get right when using the CHD man tool, otherwise you might delete your hard drive. I almost forgot to mention a very good website for making these hard drives. It's the Killer Instinct Project. Give this site a read before you start. There is a lot of good information here. I saved this whole page to my computer just in case the website ever goes down, and I recommend you do the same. Read the warnings and disclaimer in case you haven't heard me mention it like six times already. Okay, so I open a command prompt by hitting the Windows button and typing in CMD. You'll need to run as administrator. To do this, you right-click the Windows Command Processor icon and choose Run as Administrator. I didn't do this the first time and it screwed me up. The files won't copy unless you run as administrator. I copy the path to my main folder and then use the CD command in the command prompt to go to that folder. CD, space, and then paste the file path. Now I'm in the folder containing my CHD file and the CHD man script. Typing in CHD man gives you a list of all the available commands. I type in the command to copy and pay special attention to the physical drive I am writing from. I go back to my disk management to make sure it is drive 2. Since I'm neurotic, I open another command window and check the drive using the disk part utility. Hit the Windows button, type in CMD, and then once inside, use the command disk part. And then list disk. Yep, disk 2 is my target drive. It's 14 gigabytes, even though my card is 16. Certainly not the drive that says 149 or 931 gigabytes. I remember once I had to use this disk utility to initialize my hard drive in order to get it to copy, but in this case it didn't seem to be required. And I make a typo. After a little searching, I find that I put a dash in front of extract HD. And then I get another error, which is good, because I forgot to show you the command that lets you know how large of an SD card or hard drive you'll need. chdman info-i, which means input, and then add my file name. You can see I'm using the Killer Instinct Project website in the background for this command. 14,667,345 bytes. At least I think they're talking about bytes here. I have 14.84 gigabytes, so that should be enough. I put my command in again, chd man, no dash this time, extract hd, dash i for input, then I add my file name, sfrushrook, dash chd, dash o, which means output, two forward slashes, one period, another forward slash for good measure, and then my physical drive too which I checked about seven times now. I recommend you do the same. Hey, it didn't work. Fantastic. I go to the hard drive utility and see it's not initialized. I was originally going to initialize it, but realize I don't want to do that. I did hit the refresh button to make my disk show up, so I'm not sure if that step is necessary or not. Hitting enter a second time made it go. This one took about 12 minutes to copy. Again, it's best to let the computer do its thing uninterrupted. You can always go to another computer and play some classic arcade games. So this ended up copying correct, and that's it for the tutorial. I hope this was useful information for you. You can see the CHD man portion was a little disjointed, but that's probably going to be your experience too. I uploaded my Silverstrike hard drive image to archive.org and hope to get more people to do the same. Anyhow, good luck! Thank you for watching, Flesh Creature.
Now get back to work.